Steak frites is that dish that you always order at any brasserie, any bistro. It's comforting, it's delicious, and any of those places should be able to make it absolutely perfectly. I take a little twist on it just to make it a bit more fun and to bring a little bit more flavor to the party. I'm Chef Joe Chan, based in Austin, Texas, here in the Maiden Kitchen, making for you today steak frites. I love steak frites. I think it's a great way to cap off a hard day's work. It's celebratory. It's also just super comforting. Who doesn't love capping off their day with a little bit of fries and a piece of meat? Being a triathlete, my wife doesn't really love a lot of fried foods, but one thing that we can agree on is steak fries. The reason being, it's crispy on the outside, but it's still got that nice steamy potato in the center and it makes you feel like you're not just eating terrible fried foods. Super delicious, it's got a great texture to it, takes on sauce well, and that's where we found our compromise. This is something that's great that you can do the day before, let it sit in the fridge overnight, makes it super delicious, adds that little oomph to your steak. So I'm gonna take my ribeye here, a little bit of the shio koji that I've got, a little offset spatula, keep things nice and clean. Sort of just rub this all around. Shio koji is this absolutely amazing, versatile ingredient. I've been using it, experimenting with it, putting it in all kinds of different things. It's the cultures that come from rice. It adds a lot of umami flavors, this sort of fermented flavor to things. It's the basis of sake, it's the basis of making soy sauce. So all those flavors that you really love out of that, it brings that to the party. Really for me, that sort of four to six hour point is the happy point of like the minimum that I do, but even at two hours, you'd see a lot of effect. If you can't find shio koji, I love doing a wet brine on my steaks. It's sort of not the typical way that most people brine their steaks, but I like doing a 10% salt solution to water, adding in a little bit of garlic, a uh, little bit of oregano, a little bit of parsley, and just letting my steak sit in that overnight. I'm gonna move it into a resealable bag just for overnight. I like doing this better than leaving it on some sort of surface because it really forces the marinade to touch the steak all around. So we'll place it in the bag and kind of press around it to make sure that the shio koji is touching the steak all around. Close it up, seal it, and it's ready to go in the fridge overnight. The most important thing about cutting potatoes is gonna be having a nice sharp knife. That's really the bread and butter of any great kitchen is going to be having a sharp knife. So when it comes to cutting these, I always cut them into planks first, and that sort of helps with the evenness. And then once you've got your planks, you can cut them into your batons. Once you've got your fries nice and evenly cut, the most important thing is to get them soaking. This is gonna help leach out some of the initial starch in here and give you a really nice even fry on them. So we'll just throw them into water. Room temperature, cold water, it doesn't really matter. All that matters right here is that you're getting them to start soaking and start to push some of that starch out. You can already see the water's changing colors and that's really what you wanna, what you wanna get out of this is just to start pushing some of the starch out of these fries. So I'm making compound butter. I'm gonna start by picking some of my herbs here. So I've got some nice rosemary, a little bit of thyme, and some parsley. You wanna make sure that you pick these and get all of the leaves off, leaving off the stems. So we sort of just make a pile here of all of our herbs. Now that I've got my pile of herbs ready to go here, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a nice chop. I don't mind just chopping these all together. You really just wanna make a small bundle and start chopping. So now that we've got our herbs chopped, I'm just gonna add it into our tempered butter here. Really, you're just trying to incorporate everything, so we'll just kind of push the herbs onto this. You wanna temper your butter, but if it's kind of cold wherever you are, you can throw your butter into the oven or into the microwave just for a little bit to help you with the tempering of it, just to be able to push these herbs around and soften it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take a spoon and just push the herbs right into this butter. Now that I've got it really evenly combined here, I'm just gonna move it into some plastic wrap and roll it into a log so it's easier to use for the future. And then I just go ahead and wrap it up in this plastic wrap, roll it into a log, and then pinch off the ends and just twist it so it forms a nice neat log. 
Now that's ready to go in the fridge or into the freezer for whenever you need it. So I've got a steak here. It's been sitting for about 24 hours in the Shio Koji. So you'll see that it, the color has changed a little bit in it. You see a little bit more moisture coming out of it. That's totally normal, super delicious now. So we're gonna take it out, pat it dry and get it ready for cooking. So we're gonna go ahead and pat this guy dry. The thing that most people get nervous about when they do steak in a pan is that they don't like when it sort of like spits that fry oil at you. And really that's the effect of there being moisture on the steak counteracting with the oil in the pan. So what you wanna make sure of whenever you cook steak is you want it to be as dry as possible on the outside so that when you add it to the oil, it actually crisps up rather than the effect of like the sort of the steam from the water coming at you. So now that the steak is dry, I'm gonna let it temper out for about 30 minutes. This is also a really great trick for making steak at home. It gives a better real feel when you're putting the steak in the pan, when you kind of do that like chef touch touch to see what temperature it is. If the steak is super, super cold, it's not gonna feel like the temperature that when people say this is medium rare, it's not gonna feel like that if the steak is super cold when it goes in the pan. So you wanna make sure that you temper it so you get a real feel on it. So I've got my oil warming up here in our Dutch oven. Dutch ovens are great for frying. They've got great heat retention. It's really, really even. You've got enough space. It makes it not scary to fry at home. So I really love using a Dutch oven for this. We've got our oil rising right now to about 375 and these fries have been soaking overnight. They're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them, drain them off and get them ready to blanch. So it's really important to make sure that you pat these dry because similar to drying a steak, this is what's gonna cause the oil to spit. So you wanna make sure that they're as dry as possible to keep frying at home really safe. So whenever you're making fries, you always wanna make sure you blanch them in oil first. This helps you create that really nice skin, gives you that nice crunch on the outside of the fry. So that first blanching in oil helps develop the skin on the outside. The second time that you fry actually is what crisps it up and gives you that nice golden brown color. Leave enough room, cause you're going to have it bubble up. So you wanna do small batches here, super controlled, be as safe as possible. Fry burns are not fun. So I'm gonna use a spider here and start dropping my fries in to our oil. Again, very carefully, you're gonna see the bubbling that starts. So you don't wanna push too hard here with the amount of fries that you put in. And once they're in, you just wanna give them a good stir. Keep them moving around so that they're not sticking to the bottom of the pot or to each other. So I'm gonna get ready to sear off our steak. I've got our made-in carbon steel frying pan here, 12 inches, ready to go. We get the heat on here. I like using carbon steel for this because it's really nice and light. It's easy to get it in and out of the oven. Doesn't have that same weight of cast iron, but performs in the same way. My wife hates to admit it, but she can't really carry our cast iron pans around because she lacks the like weird chef strength that I have. So we use carbon steel whenever we're making steak at home. So got the pan heating up, a little bit of neutral oil, just throw that in there. You want to get a good amount so you can get a good sear on this steak. And now that our steak is nice and dry, I'm gonna go ahead and season it off. So we'll throw a decent amount of salt on here and then pepper. And same thing on the other side. So I like to season my steak right before cooking because salt typically makes a little bit more moisture leach out of the steak. And that moisture is what's gonna make your oil spit back at you and kind of create a lot of those problems with burning. So I like to wait until right at the last moment to go ahead and season the steak, make sure it's nice and evenly distributed. You wanna see a little bit of smoking off of your oil. That's what's gonna let you know that it's super hot. Whenever it comes to steak, you wanna get that nice hard crust on there. And the only way that's gonna happen is if your oil is smoking hot and your steak is nice and dry. The best way to get a nice crust on your steak is to make sure that there's enough oil in the pan that's going to hit that, that side right away when it goes in. This is sort of like the point where you wanna move very, very quickly. Get a nice dry piece of steak, and once you put it in, you wanna give it a little bit of a press just to make sure the full surface area of the steak has adhered to the pan. So I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees right now, ready to go for my steak. We're just gonna go ahead and transfer and put the whole pan inside. I'm really happy at a medium, so which my wife would say medium rare. I would say a good like three or four minutes in there just to get it up to temperature, and then you wanna give it a little feel to see where it's at. So now that our steak's ready to go, I'm gonna pull it out of the oven, throw it back onto the stove top, and get ready to start basting. Just letting it sizzle a bit here. 
pushing off to the side and getting my compound butter ready to go to add into the pan. So I'll add my compound butter in, just let that start to melt off. The goal here is to add this last bit of flavor, a little bit of fat onto our steak. Now that we've got it basted, got that nice brown butter flavor on top of there, we're gonna go ahead and take it over here and just get it ready to rest. You want the juices to redistribute. It's really shocking to meat when you cook it because all of that muscle structure tightens up. And what you wanna do is let it all relax again. That way the juices can redistribute. And when you do that first slice, not everything just leaks out. Now that the steak's resting, we're gonna go ahead and finish frying off these fries. Got my oil back to 375, ready to go. We'll go ahead and start throwing these fries in. So you wanna do this in small batches and make sure you get up to that perfect GBD so it's golden brown delicious. So stirring them constantly just to make sure they don't stick to each other or the bottom of the pot. You'll start to see the color form pretty quickly here. And one of the most important things about fries is as soon as you get them out of the oil, you wanna go ahead and season them with the salt right away. This is the best way to get the salt to stick onto the fry itself and give yourself that nice seasoning. You want to be able to move really, really quickly with something like this. These things, the fries aren't in here for very long. We're talking about, you know, a matter of seconds. So you want to make sure you think about the process of where you're going to land things, how you're going to season them, what you're going to move around. That way you're not running around while things are burning. I'm going to go ahead and plate off the steak. Our steak made in our carbon steel pan, super easy. Again, something that can move into the oven, really lightweight. And then we've got our fries that we made in the, the seven and a half quart Dutch oven. Lots of movability in there. It can really move the fries around and get this really nice golden brown color on it. So I've got my steak, it's been rusting. This guy will go right on the plate here. And then just a big hunk of fries. You just put right on there. This is dinner for two. So we'll finish off with just a little bit of parsley over the top just to give it some nice color and a little bit of sea salt just to finish the steak. The best way to tell how a steak is done for me is by touch. So as I go and touch the steak, it feels right here in the center of it, just like it feels in this part of my hand. Some chefs will tell you that as you move around, this is kind of medium rare, this is medium. As you get into here, this is more what well done feels like. It's really up to you. If you're just starting out with cooking steak, I would say use a thermometer. That's gonna give you a more accurate reading, but Whenever you cook a steak and it's the way that you like it, get sort of a feel for it and that's gonna help you create that benchmark. All right, so we've got our steak frites ready to go. I'm gonna give it a taste. This looks exactly like how we make it at home. Some fries that my wife and I can agree on that we're happy with and ribeye, which is always a crowd pleaser. Super delicious. You taste the shiokoji through it. That compound butter gives it this really nice brown butter finish to it. Fries are super tasty. A Little bit of that like steamed potato in the center, crispy on the outside, perfect. Steak done in the carbon steel frying pan, our fries made in the seven and a half quart Dutch oven. We're here in the made-in kitchen. I'm Chef Joe Chan coming to you from Austin, Texas.